This is the spotted harlequin snake, a secretive yet incredibly vibrant snake. Their beauty is unmatched amongst the South African snakes, yet they are incredibly rare due to their burrowing habits. They are one of the holy grails for South African herpers and they come in a multitude of beautiful colors and patterns. But out of nowhere on a really random day, one of us got a call for a red snake at someone's house. And unfortunately I was out of town at Gamtoos on the river enjoying myself and was unable to actually catch the snake. But thankfully a good snake catcher buddy of mine was able to go and retrieve the snake for me. And man I was so surprised. It was by far the most beautiful harlequin I have ever seen and this specific morph is incredibly rare with few records of them in South Africa. And to make things even better, she was gravid, which is the term people use for a reptile that is pregnant. This just blew my mind as I could not wait to see what the babies could look like. So I kept her a bit longer in hopes that she would actually lay eggs in captivity. Alright guys, something amazing happened. So there was a beautiful spotted harlequin snake that was removed off of a property that I unfortunately wasn't able to join on, but she's currently hiding there, fossorial snake a bit. But what's really incredible is that she has dropped eggs. Look how cool they are, those are so small. Now I've really been excited, oh, I see her like hiding in there, it's very camouflaged. But what's really amazing is that the specific phenotype of this harlequin species is very rare. And when I saw that she was gravid, I knew that I had to keep until she laid the eggs. And I will release her back exactly where we got her. The owner gave us permission to take her back. And when these eggs have incubated and hatched, we will take them back there as well. But for the record, no one has ever really done this with this specific phenotype before. Or probably not even of the species. So this is something I'm really curious for. It's just a purely interesting record and I cannot wait to see the results. But let's get these eggs out and let's put them in there and let's get them to an incubator. I've got a friend, Kevin, you guys have seen on his other channel, he loves to remove snakes and he will be incubating the eggs for us. Now with some delicate handling, I managed to get all six eggs safely into this container and now they are ready to go be taken to Kevin and guess who decided to pop out. She was very curious as to what I was doing, so I had to take her out for a quick second. I'm going to put her back and then let's call Kevin up. Alright, good news guys, Kevin did an excellent job at incubating the little harlequin snakes, they look so beautiful and this one's just wrapped all around my finger. I don't know, I'm going to get him off now, it's kind of hard to explain, like they actually kind of, it's like he's sticking to me, look at that, they're quite strong. There you go, that's where I want you to go. These are so beautiful, and for those of you who don't know, these snakes are actually venomous, and their venom hasn't been studied in a lot of detail, but from my experience it definitely feels very cytotoxic. <laughs> Maybe even potentially some neurotoxins and stuff like that, but they're so small. It's it's and they're not too medically important. That one would need the ho to go to the hospital and stuff. So no one really cares too much about researching it. But look how amazing they are. They have front fixed fangs, just like cobras. But now they've been put in a new family of Attractas pididae. That's a hard name to pronounce. I may have butchered it a bit, but that's the same family that the stiletto snakes are in. And you can see how tiny you are, They're right next to their little eggs here. And then, where's that little one rank coin you had, by the way? Shot. And if you see right next to our South African one rank coin, they are just so small, and this one's out and about already. Some of them, they all have their own personalities, eh? Some of them are just wild, and some of them are pretty chilled. <laughs> That's so cool. So anyway, we can just wait for their first shed, and then we'll take them back to where the mother was found, and release them there, because these guys don't belong in captivity. And after two whole weeks, these beautiful snakes have finally shed. Except for this one right here. You can see this one's got a bit of stuck shed about the midway portion of the body. So we're going to help this beautiful little snake shed. And then we can finally take those beautiful photos that are so badly you want to take. And we can release these snakes back in the wild. There you go. So all I'm doing is I'm currently just holding the spot where it is shed. And you can see he's kind of just crawling his own way out of it. That way I'm not hurting him, I'm not pulling by any chance, or by any means. This guy is simply just helping himself, which is very, very important. Come on, no need to stop. Nice thing is that it's been nice and moist in there, so he is ready. And that must feel so relieving, 
Oh my goodness, now it is important that I help to get this guy's shed off. Because what happens if that shed gets stuck and rots, it can cause a bad infection and actually end up killing the little guy. So this is the only reason why I'd actually assist the little one. But look how beautiful that is. Stunning little snake. It's doing such a good job. Come on. Come on, you're almost there. Wow, look at that here. That is incredible. I can actually feel the body's getting thinner. Hold on. We're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> and that's it. Look at that. That is so satisfying. And boop. We got shed. A nice, beautiful little harlequin. That is so cool. Now it's time to get some pictures of this beautiful one. All right, moment of truth. Get the focus ready. Let's see my shutter speed's at 60. That might make it a little blurry. Let's rather put a 125. Let's up this up. Wee. Sometimes this is like a big jump. About 800 should do. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be the amount I need. And now I've got to take my pictures. Look at that little head. He's so cute. On that head there. Oh, it's amazing how well this works. Otherwise, this guy's just squirming around the whole way. And I can only pray this comes out good enough. And he's going to stop moving. And that's perfectly fine. So that's really cool. I'm really happy with that. This was the last one I needed to photograph. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to soak them in a little bit of water. That way they can drink. And then uh, we're going to take them out to go be released. So I'm really happy with the whole process so far. And I'm so glad it's finally coming to an end. And that these guys can go free. <laughs> so cool. What amazing snakes. Time to release them. It's raining quite nicely. So we're going to take them to a nice spot here. And you can see these roots are perfect for them to go. They can explore and they can kind of hide under these roots. These roots provide a great network of shelter under here. So these guys can finally be free here. That is so cool. I'm so glad I could do this for them. And that they can finally be free. It is raining a bit on my camera. So I'm not going to spend too much time. But that is so damn cool. I'm so glad it's finally all been done.